Hello and welcome to a bit of an off-the-cuff video about the Commodore VIC-20 Super Expander and I did a video about this probably about a month back and in that video I said that I was probably going to make another video showing you how to actually program using that cartridge and how to actually utilize some of the basic commands that that cartridge adds. So today I'm going to be doing a bit of an off-the-cuff video about how to actually use some of those commands to program graphics on the Commodore VIC-20 using the Super Expander. So uh, let's get to it. Uh, so here I am, I got the Super Expander installed. Uh, as you can see, I've got 6,519 bytes free, so 6.5K free, because this adds another 3K. Brings the system up to 8K, but the screen still needs 1.5, so you have about 6.5 left over for the user. Normally, you only have about 3.5. And, and uh, yeah, we've got a number of graphics commands to play with. This first one I'm going to show you is going to be the circle command. So we're going to enter our graphics mode. Actually, no, graphic one, graphic two for high res monochrome, which is what I'm going to show you here. I'll talk about more about the different modes later. And then I'm going to go 20, circle, and then I'm just going to select two for the color. Uh, I'll explain this later, but just know that this selects the color. And then we're gonna select the coordinates. So we're gonna do 511, 511. And what this means is basically just the X and Y coordinates for the center of the circle. And this does not correspond to the actual pixels, but it's 1023 across and 1023 vertically too. So 00, zero will be the top left-hand corner and 1023, 1023 will be the bottom left-hand corner or bottom right-hand corner, sorry. So anyway, we're going to do 511, 511 will be the center of the screen. And then we're going to go 100 pixels out on the Y axis and, or on the X axis, 100 pixels out on the Y axis. And that's it. So now let's run it. And there we have a circle in the center of the screen. It is not quite a perfect circle, so can do some things to help alleviate that. To get out of graphics mode, we press F1 and then 4 after that and then hit enter. How that works is some of the function keys are mapped to commands, like F1 is mapped to the graphic command, uh, F2 is mapped to color, F3 is mapped to draw, F4 is mapped to sound, F5 is circle, F6 is point, F7 is paint, and F8 is list. But So we're going to press F1. And four, which is just graphic four, is basically just return from graphics mode. I think you can also just do graphic zero, which will take you back to uh, text mode. Type that, even though it won't appear on the screen, you can type it when you're in graphics mode. And then hit enter, and it'll take you back to text mode. Hopefully that was clear enough. We can adjust stuff like our X and Y, so we can make it like 100 tall on the 100 wide, and then 200 tall here. Now you can see it's stretched vertically. There are two more parameters we can add with the circle command. To draw a semicircle, we can go something like 0, 50. Now it draws a semicircle. So basically what we're telling basic to do here is draw a certain section of the circle. So we're telling it just to draw from 0 to 50. This does not refer to the degrees, but far right hand of the circle is zero and goes all the way around to 100 so we can go something like zero to 80 and see it doesn't quite go all the way around but it just goes better part of the way back around to zero again so it's not in degrees which would be zero to 360 but it's zero to 100 so here's a little program that i wrote it's not too long and uh yeah this just draws a smiley face on the screen but it's sort of is an example of the circle command and a couple other commands sort of at work or like you know an application for these commands so it draws the smiley face on the screen fills it yellow and there it is it draws his face on the screen uh, just a little bit creepy but let's look at the code so first we're selecting graphic one this basically selects multicolor high res or multicolor low resolution mode. It's hard to talk and type at the same time. So this is just like multicolor low resolution, but you can have four colors in a cell, but it's lower resolution. 
This selects the colors. So we're gonna go background, red, border, black, text, black, auxiliary, yellow. And here's our first circle command. So we're selecting the text color. So if we were to go put a zero here, it would reference this color, put a one there, it would reference this color, put a two there, it would reference this color, and put a three there, it would reference this color. And we're gonna do 511 to put it in the center of the screen. And I did 300 and 400, that basically makes it more round. And then we're drawing two more circles for the eyes. They're slightly wider than they are tall. Let's see, 60 wide, 46 tall, also in black. And then here's for the mouth, 511, 550, slightly shifted down. Then it has height and width, width and height. And then we're gonna go zero to 50, so to draw a semicircle. Just the bottom half of the circle there. And then we're gonna go 75, 25 on this other circle, which draws another sort of semicircle nose. Here it is running again. Yeah. Next, I want to talk about the fill command. So, as you can see, it fills in with yellow after it draws that first circle. And that is because of line 40 here. So, it's 40, and we're using the paint command. We are referencing third color, our auxiliary color, which we set to yellow. We're telling it to use that. And then we're just Basically, you have to give it a point on the screen, and it will keep filling in from out from that area until it hits another line, which would be the other circle. It draws a circle, and then it starts filling until it hits a line, and it'll fill that shape up. So yeah, that's the paint command. This next command is the point command. We just give it a color, and this basically just fills a single pixel on the screen. So we're going to go fills a single pixel and then give it some coordinates and it'll put a dot there by filling a single pixel, which is basically uh, what we do for the eyes. So yeah, the eyes are just a single pixel using the point command. Or not, not just the eyes, but like the, the center of the eyes, whatever you call that. So I can't seem to remember right now. So what if you want to draw a box on the screen? Well, there actually is no box command, so that's kind of annoying. Here's a little example program I wrote. We're going to go into high res monochrome mode. And then we're going to use the draw command, which just draws a line between two points. We're going to use two, which represents the text color. And then we're going to go with our first point. This is our top right hand corner of this box. And then we're going to go two. And then our second point, which is going to be 600, 400. And then down to 600, 600. And then to 400, 600. And then back. So our first point, 400, 400, is going to complete the box. If you run that, there, there's our box. It's kind of annoying that we have to write that really long command to draw it though, but I think they left out a box command. They have the box command on the 128 and the plus four and the graphics commands on there. I think they left it out on this thing just so they can fit it into four kilobytes because there's only four kilobytes of ROM on the uh, VIC-20 Super Expander just to sort of squeeze it all down. They couldn't fit a box command. So you have to do it with a draw command with a whole bunch of points like this. But anyway, not the end of the world. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to essentially plot characters on the screen when in graphics mode. So I've added a few things to our box program. Uh, it's got just input, enter a number. Uh, I'll show you that in a sec. Got 10, graphic 2, and there's our box. And then we use the char, char, yeah, char command. We select a position, like a character cell position on the screen where it starts with 0, 0 being in the top corner. It does not use the same coordinate system that the other graphics commands use. And the screen size is reduced a bit to pull off the graphics mode. And color doesn't matter it will always use what you have the text color set to and this only works in high res mode I'll show you that in a second but so we so have our coordinate then our text will be check out this cool box in quotes and down here we have another char command 
and we can't just put a number there. It has to be a string argument. So if we want to print a number variable, we have to use the string command. This is not a super expander command. It's just a regular basic command. And we put like str dollar sign in brackets the variable. So you have a number variable, and it'll put our number variable on the screen. You can't just put the variable directly after the comma like you can with like a print command. Print and go like x equals 45. Print x, and it'll convert it to a string for you. Well, you have to tell it manually to convert it to a string. The char command. So anyway, let's run this. Number. 33. And there we go, we've plotted text in uh, graphics mode for the program and then our number. I made it so you can input a number. I don't know why that would just be kind of cool. So anyway, this only works in high res, but remember how I said that? So we're going to switch to multicolor low res mode. And I'll show you that in a second. As you can see, the resolution is lower and our text is kind of not right looking. The colors are all weird. It looks almost like an Apple II. And the resolution is not really right, so you can't really read the text because the text data that's stored in character ROM is meant for high resolution monochrome mode, which is what normal VIC20 text mode is, and it's not meant for uh, multicolor. You can still sort of read what it says, but I really can't see much of a reason why you want to use this. So, when in high res mode, you aren't restricted just to one color, uh, you can have multiple colors, they just can't be very close to each other. You can only have one color per little cell. And a cell is basically the size of a text card. And I did it again. I always forget to put the device number after I type load command when I want to load something from disk. And it goes to load something from tape. And then there's really a Okay, okay now it's working. Now I added a few more things here. Here's color, we're gonna set the border, her background to black, border to blue, text color to five for green, and the auxiliary really doesn't matter in a high res. So when in high res mode, the auxiliary color doesn't really matter. We're just gonna set that to that, and then we're gonna draw our box, which will be green. And then we use the region command, which basically just changes the text color. So we can use the color command leave this map to F2. Color, and then we can go like six for blue background, two I believe for red border, one for white text, and like four for I don't know what border, auxiliary. Type that, and there we go. We got our, we got our blue background with red border, white text. Wanna well, just change the text color, you can use the region command. Seven, which will change the text to yellow yellow text. Anyway, we're going to change it to cyan and put check out this box and then change it to red for our uh, number. Let's run it. Number. And there we go. We got multiple colors, but they're spread out and not in each other's cells. So we can have multiple colors on the screen in high res. It's basically, you can have multiple colors on the screen at the regular basic screen. They're just like each individual character can be a different color, but you can't have multiple colors within a character. That's basically what this is. So we have cyan, green, and red. So next I want to talk about some of the uh, register read commands, what I'm going to call them. And these basically return a value. The first one's called RGR. This basically reads the graphics mode that we're in. Put a value here, it doesn't really matter, don't know why. It has that thing in brackets where you have to put a value. But anyway, we can do that and it will return the graphics mode we're in. So we're in graphics mode zero, which is basically regular text mode. The next one is our color, read color. So we're gonna go print R C O L R. And we could put whichever color we want. So zero would be the screen color, which would be black. One for the border, which is six, which is the color code for green. You get the idea. This is used to uh, read the uh, paddles, but I don't have any paddles hooked up at the moment. 
So yeah, I can't really demonstrate that. Next, we, we also got R dot, so we gotta print. Let me put an XY, so we can go 511, 511 for the center of the screen. And that should return the value of whatever color pixel is at the center of the screen, which in this case is zero since there's just black at the center of the screen right now. Next, I want to show off the uh, rjoy command. This one's a bit more interesting. It's for reading the joystick. I'm just going to write a little program here. Uh, as for the value you put in with the rjoy command here, uh, it doesn't really matter what you put in there as long as it's lower than 255. It can be zero to 255 actually. This hints to maybe they were planning to have more joystick ports on the VIC-20 and they put the number for the joystick port you want to read. I don't know, but there's only one joystick port on the VIC-20, but if there was two, you could put a different value there for to see which port you want to read, but anyway, there's only one port, so it doesn't really matter what value you put there. 10, now this should just read the joystick and return the value. As you can see, with the joystick pointed straight up, I'm not pressing anything. It just returns zero, what if I go up, it goes one, down, two, left, four, right, eight, and sort of up to the, up to the right would be nine, which would be one plus eight. So one is up, eight is right, and then one plus eight is nine. So we go up to the right, it's nine, and then down is two, eight is right, so bottom right would be 10, 1 for up, 8, 4 for left, so up left would be 5, plus 4, 4 plus 2 would be 6 for bottom left, and 128 for fire. So anyway, so here's a little program I wrote. So at the beginning, in line 10, we're going to go J equals Rjoy 0. And then I just did a bunch of if thens. So just if then, if it equals one, then print up. If it equals eight, then print right. If it equals two, then print down. If it equals four, then print left. And then I did like one plus eight, which would be up plus right, then print upper right. Then I did two plus eight, which would be one plus or eight plus down which would be lower right, and same thing with the left, and then 128, print fire. This is not a very efficient way to read the joystick, but it's just the way I did it for this demonstration. So if we run this, it just goes in an infinite loop. Run this and I print up, it just says up, down, left, right, upper right, lower left, upper left, a lower right fire and if it equals zero it doesn't do anything so it only prints when I move in a direction or hit fire so yeah doing it as much if ends like this is not a very efficient way of you know, reading the joystick like that but anyway and well that's just about it for today's video I'm sorry if this one was a bit more bland than the my usual videos but it was a video I really wanted to make for a while. And uh, yeah, as usual, thanks for watching. Have a great day.